What's up, Moto Buddies? Mike here from Taco Moto Co. and Baja Taco Tours. I have a 500 Beta RR. This is a four-stroke RRS dual sport bike. It's our first Beta. It's our first non-KTM in quite a while. First non-Austrian bike, whether it be a Gas Gas, KTM, or Husky. So this is a European dual sport bike in the big bore class, and it's rated at 500. It's called a 500, but the engine displacement is really 478 cc's. And that's in comparison to the KTM 500, which is uh, it over uh, it oversells itself. Uh, it undersells itself, rather. It's a 510cc engine, um, and it's called a 500. And on the KTM, uh, it's about a little under 10% more cc's on the on the KTM 500 versus the Beta 500. A couple other uh, things to compare between the two is this is a double overhead cam engine. Well, that's a single. And so this feels like a 450. And it's more uh, engines as far as displacement and then like with the double, kit, double cam engine, it really feels like one of the KTM 450 race bikes. It has the same really exciting peppy engine, very aggressive uh, power delivery, very strong, very hard hitting, very fun. And this is fully stock. I haven't done anything to this bike. And in stock trim, I think this puts out somewhere near, and I'll put the exact specs. I'm gonna get some of these numbers probably a little off. I should have had notes. I think that this is pushing high 40s, maybe uh, maybe even 50 horsepower in stock trim, while the KTM is cranking out 38, 39 stock. So considerably more power. And that's due to the fact that it is uh, essentially that 450 and 450 open class bikes will always put out higher horsepower numbers maybe not torque overall through the entire curve but higher horsepower that's greater piston speed and in fact this engine has i think it's a hundred millimeter bore and like a uh maybe a 60 millimeter stroke and then the ktm i think is a 95 millimeter slug with maybe a 70 millimeter stroke again i'll put those exact numbers so that means this engine's going to have uh, considerably higher piston speeds, which will contribute to the horsepower number, and then just the uh, very responsive feel and feedback to that power delivery. And my overall impressions right now, after putting a couple hours on this bike, are that it is it is very fun, very lively, very powerful stock and stock trim without doing anything to it. This is this is a more powerful, higher revving funner bike than the 500 stock. Now, comparing stock to stock, <clears throat> those are sort of those impressions. The 500, once we sort of throw the, the taco hammer at it, then that's considerably different. That's an altogether different machine. Um, and it's tough to compare the two because of that, because the engine dynamics are so different. But let's keep going regardless. So I have a already a couple hours in on this bike. I'm sort of having a love, I love a lot, and then I hate a lot about this bike. Uh, I hate more about it, or don't like, hate's too strong a word. There's things about it that I, that I strongly dislike more unexpectedly than I thought. Um, so let's hit some of the things that I'm not a fan of straight away. Uh, the gearing is very tall. It's a 15, I forget what the rear sprocket is maybe the number is right there so 1548 which is just super tall i did a little highway sec i've done some highway on this and i had to i have to tell you i i got off the highway pretty quickly because of how twitchy the front end on this thing is and that's one of the things so let's let's talk about gearing and suspension a little bit together at the same time so on the highway, I was running a section that had some trucks and it was grooved. It was that concrete pavement that was grooved and the front end was unbelievably twitchy, very light. I tried to lean forward, I tried to get over the bars and that helped some to put some weight on the front end, but it was sketchy and I got off at the next exit. I did not have a good time on the highway. The front end is super light, super loose and I am within stock range. I'm within the range of the rear spring, so the sag is not thrown off. I weigh about 170, 75, and that's within the range of that stock rear spring, so I'm not, I'm not stink bugging it, and that front end just was light. And the forks, I could drop them down, and they're pretty, 
they're they're set i think at a good spot on the ktms i like a longer wheelbase on the on the big board ktm like on the 500 and so what i do on on my ktms is i would drop it to that first to the notch right there what i may end up doing is experimenting and dropping it all the way to the top of that collar and see how that affects it uh, I think it will. I think it will improve it. And so I'm willing to give that a try. But just really what I'm doing here is how does this bike feel? What, what, are, what do I think about it without making any adjustments? And um, so that's that as far as suspension goes. And then the gearing, it is very tall and it worked great on the road. So let me say this, before I got into that, that grooved concrete section, uh, the highway manner was really, really good because it's geared so tall. It just cruises along at fairly moderately lower RPMs relative to speed. I think I was like 75, keeping up with traffic. Didn't, didn't perceive a lot of engine buzz. The bars did not seem to be very buzzy. Uh, and I think that's the uh, result of the, uh, the, the double overhead cam engine being a little bit smoother than a single overhead just because of the mathematics of the engine itself and that taller gearing when I throw on the 13. So Beta provides a 13 sprocket. I don't think I'll throw in a 13. So to go from 1548 to 1348 is a significant bump. The off-road uh, gear pull, you know, torque will go up, but then highway speed will drop. And I think I'm gonna compromise and go to 14. So I'll grab a 14 sprocket, 1448, I think is gonna be the ideal ratio for this bike. I don't wanna lose uh, a bunch of bunch of highway speed because I do intend to do some BDRs on this and uh, do some considerable pavement sections. I really want to see how this performs on the road. So that's going to happen. The uh, suspension, let's, let's jump back to that really quick. So because the suspension, the front end feels so light, it is, it's very twitchy off-road, at very aggressive turn-in. Now, if you are looking for a motocross, it feels very much like a motocross bike. Uh, sharp turn-in, very aggressive turn-in. And so I'm, I've been riding right now just uh, outside of Vegas and in some real tight canyons, doing some high-speed sand wash stuff. And so very fun for that. You can really tuck in, you can get a sharp turn, you you're, get some lean on it and it cuts and corners very aggressive, really well. Uh, for more dual sport use, it, it, you wanna slow that down. I wanna slow that down. And so that's where I think maybe getting some wheelbase out of it. Also very hard. Uh, the suspension is very harsh and hard. It is the faster you ride this bike, the better it feels, which is in contrast to the Explorer 48 setup on the previous generation, the 20 through 23 KTMs, the dual sports. Those are super soft and the harder you ride those. So they feel really good in the rough rock technical stuff. And then the harder you ride them, you just blow through it too fast. That's really sketchy in the whoops the ktm is this is amazing in the whoops and the harder you push it and the harder you ride it the better it feels but it is but it is not comfortable and plush in the chop and the narnar -nar and the rocks and so it's sort of the pendulum swing opposite it's the other side of the spectrum uh, compared to the ktm so while on the ktm you die so what i do is i dial in i've I've tried to stiffen up the KTM and just by dialing everything in, compression all the way up, putting everything as firm as possible, it's still not enough. And then taking this out as soft as possible, it's still not enough. So they're both really at opposite ends of the spectrum from each other. And we're going to pull the, the forks and the shock off and then revalve this and get into it and see what kind of improvements we can make. But I, I believe that with revalving and uh, dropping that front end out and getting a little more wheelbase, I think that's going to get me what I want. And then, of course, we, we talked about the, the front sprocket dropping to a 1448. So that probably covers that. Uh, let's talk about what else do I not like. So the rear tailpiece is kind of ridiculous. You can see how huge it is. When yesterday I was out on a ride, I could see some sunlight coming from behind and I could just, I could feel this thing when I was sitting on the seat, moving around and then I could see it dancing and I lost one of the turn signals. I don't think, I think this is my fault. This is not Beta's fault, this is my fault because when Gary at Sportsman's, who is amazing by the way, when we put this bike together, I bought it from him, Sportsman Cycle in Vegas. When I put this bike together with him, he did most of the work. I did, I was his helper, his flunky helper. And look at this, 
I don't think I tighten these nuts that much knowing that I was going to pull this off and put a Taco Moto tailpiece on there. So that's, that's probably my fault. And it, it, it bounced loose or hit a cactus and fell off. So, uh, that's that, but the tailpiece is super huge and super heavy and that's coming off. So I don't like that, but I can't really fault that because it meets US DOT specs. And so they just had to do that. Uh, electrical. So I've had electrical gremlins with this bike. Uh, both times, uh, the very first time I went out, I got stranded. So the, the, and I wasn't paying attention to the, to the Voyager Pro, which is a fantastic. I love this Voyager Pro. It comes stock on this bike and I absolutely dig it. This is the single best instrument of any motorcycle, stock motorcycle out there, bar none. Unbelievable. Such a great idea to put that on this bike. So I wasn't paying attention to my volts. Right now it's zero because the, 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 this is essentially when the engine is running and it's at zero right now. So I wasn't paying attention to that. And I think I had what essentially was a bad battery, the stock battery, because I was out quite a few miles into some canyon stuff. This is something I do love is a single toolless seat release absolutely fantastic again like i said i've got some really strong loves and some strong dislikes on this bike but i think these dislikes will be able to take care of so uh the battery situation left me stranded twice and uh gary even i even took it back to sportsman's and had them check everything out and charging circuit seemed to be good but all indications seem to point to a bad battery a bad cell in the battery taking the system down and I've thrown in this anti-gravity eight cell, which is my absolute go-to battery. This is a hundred and or two, 240 cold cranking amps. And the stock battery thinks like 120 CCAs. So this is considered twice, twice the power. And this is really my go-to battery. The, the one problem is though, is that the, the negative cable is too short to allow this to sit back. You can see there's a gap here. There's an inch or two gap. And so to get this to fit, I had to kind of wedge it in. Now, this tray, the tray on the bottom comes at an angle, and then this upper stop on the back comes at an angle. So it's a bit of an L situation. So I've had to put this battery in the crook of the L, and then with the strap, it's secured in there really good. I think we'll make there's there's two ways to solve this. I either need to maybe pull the seat and see if there's a little more negative cable to be found so that this battery will lean back, or I'll just 3D print a little wedge bracket back in here. Maybe I'll make a, a little, um, I'll print it out a TPU so it's kind of rubberized, but just essentially like a battery filler piece that this will then slide into and it'll secure it. And I'm, I'll be a hundred percent. Right now you can see it's a little dodgy, but I think with that 3D printed component, I'll make, I'll absolutely love it and it'll be fabulous. Uh, something that I screwed up when I put this battery in is I wasn't quite paying attention. I was so focused on the fact that it didn't fit and kind of bummed about that. I didn't realize I had thrown this in backwards. And so, uh, I touched the cables. I didn't, I didn't screw them in, but I just set the cables on here to check distance and realized after I heard the snap of the fuse popping that I had put this damn battery in backwards. So when that happened, this main fuse here on the starter solenoid popped and luckily Betty gives you two spares right there. So I just threw that in. So that's a 10, 10 amp fuse. I'll have to get us another one to throw it in there. But that was, <clears throat> that was a really easy solution, easy fix. And that was, that fuse protected everything downstream and that, that worked out really well. Um, <clears throat> the kickstand, I do not like the kickstand. What I, what I like about it is that it has a much better construction and mounting than the KTMs. So I give it credit for that, but it is too short. It's stupidly too short. Uh, when you're off road and you stop, and if you have any kind of high side situation where the, the left side is going to be higher than over here, uh, I continually have to put rocks. This is somewhat level and I think it's okay. Uh, if not a little biased to the right, but I continually have to put a rock under the kickstand. And so that's super annoying. And I think Swift Kicker, which is my number one favorite kickstand, I think Swift Kicker has a beta. If not, I'm going to urge them to, to come out with one. So that's really good uh, that, that I can replace that. But I don't like the stock one. Uh, let's see. So I think those are my biggest complaints. The tires are okay. I like the rear more than I thought I would. It's really hard. This is a very hard rubber tire, 
but it's very well spaced out. And I like the rear well enough. The front is a little hard. I don't know what the compound is, but I like a softer tire. And so I'll be switching those. I'm gonna wear these down and then I'll switch those out. So maybe that's it for the things that annoy me. And let's talk about the things that I really am quite a fan of and have impressed me a lot. The brakes, very good. So it's a Nissan rear and then it's a Brembo front. And so Brembo, if you're familiar with any of the brakes that KTM uses, it's the front, same front brake system. So very good. Nissan on the rear, Nissan, really good back there. Happy with that. The linkage, uh, I haven't gotten any situations where I have ground clearance issues, but I'll put a skid plate that covers that. Um, the, so I'm neutral on that. Uh, I've already talked about the suspension. Don't need to go any more in depth on that. The clutch is great. It's a DDS clutch, the same. They don't call it DDS like KTM does, but it's a, it's a bevel washer, diaphragm, spring clutch system. And that's really good. And that, I like that quite a bit. The uptake feels really good. Now, because this is geared so high, I've had to put a lot of clutch modulation in to get up some hill climbs and to do some, some of this desert work. Uh, but the gearing will solve that. So I'm happy about that. I love that there is a kickstand or a, a kickstart boss in there and you can add a kickstart. I will be doing that with the battery issues that I had with the stock battery that makes me more inclined. If I, if I was sitting on the fence, I'm hundred percent committed now to do a kickstart on this bike. The exhaust is very good. It is, it has a nice tone to it. It's not super loud. That is a small can. So one of the things that that contributes to the really snappy and aggressive power is the narrow body can. If you look at a KTM uh, can on the, the dual sport bikes or like a Graves can, it's, it's considerably wider, fatter. There's just more interior volume and the low end I think will improve. So I'm gonna put a Graves on this and then I'll have Gary flash it with the other map and that will and should give me a little more low end. There's not a lot of low end grunt on this bike. It tractors well enough. It tractors like a 450. It feels very much again like that, like a 450. Uh, I'm so used to, in my mind, it keeps saying this isn't a 500, it's a 450. And so if I, if I just hold that in suspension in my mind, as I'm trying to really lug this thing and do with it, what I would normally get out of the KTM 500 because it's not there, I just can't fault it for not being what I want it to be because it's not going to be that. I think though with that Graves, I'll be able to get some of that boost on the bottom end. We'll see, yet to be determined in that other map. Uh, but this stock muffler, very good, very good sound. I don't know if it has the little cheese grater. In fact, it does not. And so I'm gonna pull this, I'm gonna pull this end cap off and investigate and see what's going on inside of there. But plenty happy with that, plenty happy with the power. The maps are really, impressive fantastic so this is a this is a two position switch up on the top you'll have dry mode and wet mode and on the bottom is traction control toggle on and off and this is the first stock ecu of any bike of any manufacturer that in my opinion gives enough map variability to to equal what we get out of the get ecu system on the ktm products and the honda when we have a get on those bikes and like the honda rl and we have our taco tune on there which which uh the strength of the get ecu system is the very very fantastic traction control a 10 mode traction control and then when we have our race map and our enduro map our single track map that feels like what this stock beta ECU feels like. And that is significant difference between the two maps. On a KTM, unimpressive. So when you have like a, like a, any of the XCFW bikes on the KTM, which are the, like a green sticker. And I know there's no more green sticker or red sticker, but to use that for context, those XCFWs are a green sticker enduro bike and they come with a map switch and a traction control button. And that's underwhelming. Neither map provides much variability between the two. The traction control is unimpressive. So that uh, compared to this, this dominates it and is superior in every way to the level of the get. And I'm blown away. I did not expect that. And so essentially 
in dry mode with traction control, this thing is a freaking wheelie monster, like a 450. The front end wants to climb up and stay in the air, and it's easy to loft it all the way up into third gear. You can do a clutch up in fourth gear. Uh, very impressive power, really strong and responsive, very fun uh, in dry mode. It's a lot to stay on top of in the dirt. So in this tight technical stuff, that map is too hot. It's too aggressive. Very fun, uh, but it's fatiguing. Power like that is demanding. It robs. Uh, you have to be on your game. You have to have really good attention. It, it, it can be uh, demanding and it can, it can buck you. It's a wild horse. So what is so uh, impressive is if you throw that thing into then rain mode, which is a really smooth linear tip in off the bottom of the throttle through like the first quarter. I'd love to see and talk to some of the beta guys and figure out what they, how far they take that, that damping effect of that first bit of the throttle on tip in on that map. It's just really smooth, very linear, very predictable. It's absolutely the right map for loose rock, loose fill, hill climbs. Uh, it's really like on-road and off-road in my opinion. And so as opposed to calling it like dry and wet, I would just say that the it's on-road and off-road and that second wet map off-road is just absolutely fantastic. Be, I'm very impressed. And then when you throw that traction control switch, which is just a two position toggle on and off, you, you engage that and the thing is just absolutely wonderful. So this is a bike that sadly, I hate to say it, but it doesn't need to get ECU. Um, and I've talked to get the Athena guys really don't have any plans. There are no plans to do anything for this bike. Uh, uh, get, I'm sorry, beta. This is the ECU right here. They make their own ECUs in house. And I'm just kind of speechless here. I'm just going to stop talking about it because it's so good. Uh, I find it to be easily the best power delivery and variability of any stock ECU stock bike out there. That's 10 out of 10 for me. Kind of bummed we won't be able to get a get on this bike. And honestly, look, it doesn't need it. Unlike the KTMs and the Hondas, which completely do, and it's transformative on those bikes, I got a hand to beta. They did a great job here. Cooling system, it hasn't been hot the last little bit in Vegas, so I haven't had a chance to really tax that, but I don't anticipate any issues there. Uh, the bike comes with a skid plate. It's got frame guards. This is a hell of a value. I forget what, what we paid for this. Uh, I'll look up MSRP and put it in the notes. But for the standard equipment, for the standard features, for the upsides of this bike, I'm just really quite impressed. All we've done to modify this is I put wheel weights uh, to balance out the rim locks. And this comes with so back to the tires, it comes with real off-road tires, unlike the Hondas or KTMs, which are uh, equipped with quiet TKC 80s. Those are to meet sound restrictions. This comes with real dirt tires. It comes with the rim lock installed. You have to do that on your KTM because they're just trying to save ounces uh, and any way to save an ounce or two here or there. So they don't put that and that way they don't have to include the rim lock weights in the final weight numbers, which is a bit of a mumbo jumbo, but this comes with it installed. So, you, so I balance that out absolutely smooth on the road. That road section that I did do until I got off, uh, it comes with forged uh, machine triple clamps and they're anodized. That's nice. That's the kind of stuff that you only get on a Husky for a little bit extra money. These hand flags are super janky. The KTM wins there, better hand flags. These are okay, I think the look is fine. I like that the Nissan, that these are, they use black instead of the like raw aluminum on a Austrian bike, that's impressive. Uh, I like that it has a single cable throttle. So there's just zero resistance because you don't have a pull and return, zero resistance. So much so, I've taken the return off some of my KTMs and I think I'm just gonna pull it off on my 500 and 350 and 450, the, the, the Austrian bikes that I have now because it's just super smooth. It feels like a bearing, a bearing throttle. I know it's not a bearing, it's plastic, but I think if, I'm gonna experiment and throw a bearing, if they have a bearing one, absolutely unbelievable. And so what a, what a really smooth, because think about how many micro movements you do with your wrist on a ride 
all of that. And so there's tension there. There's resistance there. And that all of that wrist movement adds up. You can you could do a study and determine what this tension is, what the what the resistance value is, and then how many times you turn it in an average ride. And so you're effectively giving yourself a considerable wrist workout. And so if you can re reduce and remove, that's a benefit. Uh, I really like these these the domino switches, and uh, so it comes stock with the dominoes. Best mirrors of any dual sport bike. They fold out of the way. They do this. That's fantastic. So I've I've switched now from the things that were annoying to now the things that I really like about this bike. The domino switch on the other side is a really good one. It doesn't give you an off, but neither is KTM. So that's US DOT regs. What I love about this switch is it, and the Honda does it too. Uh, KTM does not is it gives you a, uh, you can flash the high beam light. So if you have an oncoming car and uh, you worry about them seeing you, you can just pump that and it'll flash the light. On the KTM, I'm, I'm toggling between high and low to, to get the same effect on the stock switch. It's very wide. Uh, we'll work out a, our Takamoto Slim switch. Unfortunately, it doesn't have this headlight uh, uh, blip, but it gives you off. And, and in my experience, going from off to, to high is a little better than low to high, but both are good. Either way, it's better than just not having a headlight, uh, right? That, that do something. And um, so that's, that's the situation with that. Brembo on the, on the clutch. And yeah, Nissan. So I, or I think in a minute ago, I made a mistake. I said it was Nissan or is a Brembo front brake. All the braking is Nissan. And very good, I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased with the braking. Happy with that, the clutch feel is very good. It, it feels a little late, the, the power comes in a little late in the throw, and we'll see what the gearing change does. Uh, I don't, I wanna investigate that a little more, but I'm sure that's maybe just the feel of it, and I'll get used to it compared to the KTMs, which come in considerably earlier. I don't think it's adjustable. There, there wouldn't be an adjustment on, on a hydraulic, but we'll, we'll keep riding and see how that goes. I like the warning lights here. Very easy to see. This, this is just absolutely fantastic. I think it's great. Um, Open connectors, so Beta does what KTM does and a lot of others, so there's Molex connectors. Now this is unplugged, and the reason I unplugged this and the headlight is because when I was having the charging issue, the battery issue, I just pulled, I pulled the headlight wiring loose so that I wouldn't be uh, running a headlight, just so I could take every little bit of electricity and put it back into the battery. And so we'll do a video where we go through, which is really common stuff of how to safe off or protect from corrosion, the electrical connectors on this or any bike, any dirt bike anymore is gonna have some open type connectors. I'm looking at another one as I see under the seat, that's open. So these are all subject to corrosion. So is the fuses here on the bottom side and we'll get into that. Let's see, I put on Canyon Dancers. So that's the only other mod is just for tie down straps in the back of the truck. This engine has a split oil, so it's got engine oil and tranny oil, they're separated. So the oil change has two filler caps. The older KTM engines had that. So like the 08 through 11 uh, big bore engines, the 450, 500 had that situation, or they called it a 530 back in the day. And there's advantages and disadvantages to that. I won't go into it here, but I think I am gonna like this a lot. A small trouble area that is a known issue on these betas is the fact that the reg rack is here and this, this plunger, this switch, this lock tab, these bolts here, this is an annoyance. Because of this, the fork can come in and hit that and knock this loose and unplug it. And so because of that, you have to have this and they adjust it from the factory like this. This stop is really far out and I don't like that. I don't like how limited the turn angle is on this bike compared to a KTM where some guys uh, will take these out and so they'll be able to get a very sharp steering angle and I'll have to work out something. Maybe there's a mod where people remove this and relocate it somewhere else because I, I I, need to do something here and I'll, I'll wanna take those bolts out or tighten them in. So if you know of a way to relocate that or to solve that problem, let me know. I haven't 
investigated that quite yet. The graphics on the Beta are super good looking. We're gonna change out the front fender to blue and then the side panels to blue. I have a larger tank coming. We're gonna put a recluse on this. Uh, gearing we talked about, Takamoto tail end to reduce that. We're gonna put the Takamoto uh, fork wrap turn signals on the front and get rid of the stockies. Changing out the headlight. This headlight is adequate. It is not, doesn't blow me away. It is better than the incandescent previous generation KTM headlights. So it is better than that. I don't think it's as good as the Honda RL stock headlights, stock to stock. I think Honda right now has the best stock LED headlight. This beta would probably be number two. KTM Incandescent is in third place. KTM has upgraded their headlights now in 2024, the new Enduro generation. They are LEDs. I have yet to get one out at night, and so it's yet to be determined, but I would suspect that, you know, these, these stock lights, what they have is a cutoff. So there's a DOT cutoff line. And if you've ever run your, your headlight, I don't, this is, my fingers are gonna do a bad job simulating this, but as, you, as the light travels out, it, you're gonna light the foreground up to a certain point and there's gonna be a sharp cutoff. And that's so that that light doesn't go into oncoming traffic and blind oncoming traffic. That is a DOT standard. That's all of these are street legal lights and that's how that light will shine. And so when you're off road, you're, you're not seeing. So the, so effectively what happens is you decrease the amount of speed available speed to you with light throw. So a lot of times you can think about a light in terms of what is its safe speed? What, what, uh, how far is the light shining to give you the ability to ride at higher speeds? And a stock headlight for me is about 30 miles an hour off-road on a gravel road. I feel comfortable on this, the Honda, uh, a little less on that KTM stock light, but, but about 30 miles an hour is all I wanna run on a stock headlight. Putting in like a Ruby R7, or I've got some motor-minded lights at the shop that I'll swap this out for, and I hope to get about 60 miles an hour. So that would be uh, off-road on a gravel, like a farm road or a power line road uh, that will have some, you know, some up and down to it. I would like to be able to go 50 or 60, feel safe at that speed. And, and that's what I, that's about all I want at night. A racer is going to want 80, 90 miles an hour. And that's like a Baja Designs XL80 light, which is a, a long throw light. And so that's a quick, couple of quick thoughts on the lights. I don't like these grips. I'm gonna change these out to the OD Rogue grips, which are my favorite grips right now. I think that's about it. Oh, we're also gonna swap out. So we're gonna, we're gonna change this to metal connectors. These plastics are vulnerable. I don't like these. And we're gonna change these to metal. We're gonna put our 3000 hour fuel pump in the tank, the new tank that we build because the, the same fuel pump on the Beta is the same one that KTM uses, and that is a known failure point. It is on the KTMs. The Betas seem to be a, have a better track record, and uh, even in spite of that, we're pulling that out. And I'm also gonna change out the stock Molly fuel filter in the tank, the plastic fuel filter, that's coming out, and we're gonna put in our 225 hour fuel filter so those are two upgrades we will because this is going to be a baja bike beta provides a plug here for the vapor recovery system and why we would change that out is just to remove failure points i think that beta does a little better job on their stock setup than than ktm does as far as some of the some of the piece parts that go along with the stock recovery system but by pulling that off we just remove a failure point and over here i'll show you it's this canister right here. And so if there was a failure of the canister, take a rock, take a digger, and then crack that or lose a hose, then that's a vacuum leak and it's going to be pulling dirty air into the engine and throw off the fueling. So that will come out. Other than that, though, that's the only DOT requirement for this bike. This will end up being, this is going to be uh, off-road bike. We'll probably do some, uh, we'll do a race setup on this and then it's going to spend a lot of time in Baja. So those are things that lend itself really well to that, to that setup. That's probably it. Uh, there may be a few more things. Uh, we're going to change out the tires when they, when they burn out, but we're going to pull the stock tubes out. These are probably very light duty motocross type tubes. Those will come out and we'll put the moose balls in there, which right now are my favorite moose for feedback, feel, 
and even inflation adjustability because they're individual segments you can you can tightly stuff a tire or or stuff it a little under and give yourself the opportunity to change the feel of what the perceived PSI is and more to come this is uh, going to be a long-term bike in our fleet and we'll have a lot more content with it a lot more riding with it the next time you see this bike it'll have all those mods that we talked about done and we'll do a little comparison and uh, uh, with the before and after uh, so uh, this is exciting times thanks for watching if you have thoughts and feedback on beta on this bike on your beta, anything that we've talked about, please let us know. We are open to learning as much as we can about this new platform to us. Thanks so much. Go out, get some adventure.